Hey everybody, this is Mark and Nelson. We're doing something a little bit different today, Seneca Relics. Uh, we had a lot of response from our uh, knife making video, and a lot of folks wanting us to, to do another how-to, kind of show and tell. So today, we're going to make Arrowhead Necklace, start to finish. And uh, just to give you an example of what we do here, uh, these are some of the necklaces we have already made. We're in stock. And you know, this, this method is, is our method, and it's, it's uh, probably the cheapest of the <laughs> methods because uh, we try to go for simplicity. We'll make these you. out of about anything, and, and you can make arrowheads out of pieces of glass. We find these in a creek, and some of them we pick up, some of them we don't. Yeah, uh, they seem conducive to make a necklace out of wolf. We'll bring them with us. Yeah, but we also, uh, what we'd like to do is make them out of stone. Mm -hmm. So this is the, the piece we're working with today. Uh, hopefully I can pull one out of here. And what I would normally do when I'm napping is, is I would work this edge around and just try to maintain. But for the purposes of today, I see a nice big prominent ridge right here. And it terminates real prominent right there. And you can see there's a, a divot, kind of a, a low spot right here. So I'm hoping I can hit on this spot and just knock off a nice big flake right there that I can use for a necklace. Board. All right, I'm ready to take my first swat at this thing, and you never know what the rock's going to do. So hopefully this will come off as nice, a nice big flake. All right, so there's a nice great big flake, a little wider than I thought. Must have hit up on my platform, but uh, that will work. My first attack here is going to be to try to get some of these these areas that are kind of bulky maneuvered out of there as best I can anyway. All right, what I'm doing is just trying to knock some pieces off here. See, it's got a little dip there. I got to get around that dip. So I'm just chewing around that. Them down nice. Yeah. yeah. Fortunately, with this, I got a lot of room to move. So. <laughs> All right. So I've worked my way around this. I've tried to get this as cleaned up as I can, and you'll see here, I'm running into. You never know what you're going to find when you get into these rocks. A little inclusion. It looks like a, a little separation in the rock right here, and a little chunky spot right there. And I can see on the other side a line right through here. That means it's entirely possible, if not likely, that this thing's going to fly in half right there. That's okay. I'm going for a small point. So I may end up with something about this size. Uh, and then I'd have another piece over here if it, if it breaks clean, potentially for another point. But what I'm going to do, I've got this sheared up so that I'm on the high side of the center line. I'm just going to try to go around this edge and take off this big flat area here. All right, see it's, it's trying not to go there, but we'll just keep moving. There it went. Right where I thought it would. See that fissure line. It's always good when you right can read there. the rock. You know what's going to happen. Yeah, not a bit intimidated by that. We'll just deal with it. But, um, there's another next point right there. <laughs> so we'll continue with this one. I broke my knife too, dude. <laughs> All right. And hit into that. And feather that in there a little, a little bit. That off. Looks like it's getting more to the size that you want. Yeah, it's coming down good. Going nice. All 
All right, it's getting down to the size parameters I'm looking for. Arrow point. Uh, I'm going to take one more pass, and at this stage, I'm 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 thinking more about what this thing's going to look like, how I'm going to notch it, what shape it's going to take, and and uh, as long as it is, it's it's a little longer than I would like, but I'm going to leave that. <coughs> I'm going to leave that length as soon as he stopped horking. <laughs> <Excuse> me. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm going to do a, a little, little in curve it here to where it's, it's kind of curved in. Give it a little demonic look. A little pine tree like shape. And there's a little hump there. I'm trying to, to get across that. Okay, well, well, I, I have this other piece of rubber. <laughs> it happens. All right. Uh, take two. All right. We're back again with another rock. <laughs> yes, something maybe a little sturdier. We got some uh, Nether's Flint Ridge here, and I've got it. It was a small piece, got it shaped down. It's about where the other one was. Yeah, before he blowed it up. <laughs> yeah, it's not quite as thin, and I've got a pad with a backing on it now, so I have no bending pressure. Uh, so we can continue here. And all I'm doing now is just basically my final pass on this thing to get the edges sharpened up and squared up so that I can detail it after I notch it. It's a little long for a necklace point, but... Uh, we're going with it. Yeah, we'll deal with it. All right. We are uh, at the notching stage now before the final. I'm doing a direct pressure punching there. Always hazardous. Always. I mean, I'm always in danger of one of those sea flakes taking out my barb or my ear at the base. Looks like it's going good, though. But it's moving. I don't need to take these much deeper, so be plenty enough for us to get a, uh, a piece of wire in there and mm -hmm. wire it up so what I'm gonna do now is just take it and shape it a little more get it where I want it maybe grind the base down a little so it's a little easier to work with and then we'll show you the the wiring phase all right. two all right we'll finish this up show it to you and get her done all right well we are finished with the point yeah, there's the point we're going to use. All right, so for the for the wire, one thing I want to take note of is for the, this piece of wire, the, the copper here, that goes up to the loop there, that is one piece of wire. So yeah, one piece of wire does all that. Yeah, and then this is a separate piece to the winding area, that little noose looking area. That's a separate piece of wire that basically just holds that together and creates a little uh, decorative piece. We do piece use, uh, we found that uh, 20 gauge wire is good for this what I call the cradle part the, the piece that, that comes in and and grabs the point and 22 gauge which is slightly slightly smaller gauge is what we use for, for that the, little noose area for the noose, yeah. yeah so we've selected the colors and we select color based on how it's going to look with the airhead that we've we've got here so this one was a uh, fairly boring black and white ish with a little bit of red in it so uh so we selected a black wire for again what i'm calling the cradle it probably has a different name but uh, it'll come up and form a loop and then the new news area all right so here's here is my method and and you know, other people will have different ways of doing this there's probably a lot better ways but this is how i've kind of learned to do it but i take it Almost halfway down from where I'm got a piece of wire about what 10 inches long or so, yeah, about nine inches. And I'll bend it right here so it's got a little bend in it. And I'll take it through that notch. This is why you can't do this with stem points. <laughs> and I'll take it up over the as close to the center as I can get. All right, see that back through the other notch, and then back through the same notch and come up. Hard to see. And leave it like this so it went through this notch over the middle through this notch straight across the back and up here 
You got yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it takes some practice to do this too and, and get it consistent. This one, I'm going to take straight through. It's a piece that was hanging down and just come up here so it matches there. And you can push it into shape to yeah, straighten it out. And what I do from here is I used to take pliers and hold this and wind it, but I find that that mars up the wire real bad. So I just take it, I, I get it here to where it's um, fairly evenly split there, and I twist it. And I try to keep the twist as even as possible. It's starting to walk on me a little bit, and it'll, it'll do that. It's hard to, to get them. And I'll do that four or five times. About there's good. And I'll take them and split them back apart a little bit and pull them up as straight as I can get them. All right, so tools. These are the tools, you know, this to cut the wire, obviously the wire cutters. This tool is uh, for making the loop. That's its only purpose. Uh, so I'll take it, crimp it down here. I'll put a back bend in it like that. So it's mm -hmm. yeah, back bend. And then I'll take these two wires and fold them around to make the loop. Okay. Probably hard to see that, but you'll see that eye there has just one back bend. And since I don't want just one back bend, I'll reach down with these pliers about here and pull in and back bend this piece. Now I got that a little crooked, but it's not too bad. All right, that make a lot of sense. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Those two little right. tails there, I will cut off after the noose. Well, actually, I cut them off before the news. Oh, okay. Um, and so what I'll do is get them down to about even with where the stone starts and just lop them off. All right. So then you've got... you Right there, you could stop, but, but that doesn't look too, too nice. So we'll take this piece... And this can be a little tricky. It's a 22 gauge wire. Yeah, this is 22 gauge. It's a little thinner. So it's a little easier to work with. And I'll take a little bit of it. You'll see it's about the same length as the other, about 9 or 10 inches. And I'll wrap this. i got to keep hold of it so it doesn't move. And just wrap it really as tight as I can at the top here. At the eye. Right at the eye. And once it gets a good bite, then I can come back and wrap down with the longer piece. I'm trying to keep as much tension on this as possible because that's what's holding that primary wire in place. And it's not as clean as I would like, but it'll work. Quite functional. And I'll take this wire down to about there. Clip it off. Clip off at the top. And what you don't want are these little sharp edges sticking out here. So that one I just lopped off, I want to take it very carefully and just squeeze it into place so it's kind of mashed up against the wires and I'll feel if I can feel it sticking because if somebody's got this around their neck with that little piece of wire sticking them they're not going to like it too much <laughs> and I'll do the same thing with the top there, that feels pretty good alright so there is the wiring Okay, <laughs> well we've uh, agonized over a bead array and come up with this this pattern and what I like to do is lay out the pattern. I like it to be kind of symmetrical, not kind of, I like it to be symmetrical. So the same type of beads on either side, um, same pattern. Uh, so we went into the bead stock and, and pulled out what we thought was 
what we thought work. would look good. Yeah. And we've measured out, a, we're going to have to use, because these beads have such small holes, we've, we're opting for the, uh, the one millimeter leather cord. And uh, the findings, unfortunately, I don't have the, the right color, but uh, we're going to put the silver findings on the end of it. So uh, we're going to string that up here and we'll show it to you. Almost done. All right. All right, there's a... So there's the bead array. And I do let these just hang free. I don't do anything to stop them. I just let them hang free there. They'll they'll float to where they need to be. I think that was a 22 inch piece of cord you used there. Yeah, this one is uh, a little bigger of an arrowhead, so we're a little more adult sized. <laughs> so uh, so we, I did use a 22 inch cord. Uh, standard is about 16 um, to 20, but uh, that one we made a little longer. Uh, so the next step is going to be putting these findings on, which will finish it out. All right. And these little crimp-on findings here are really tedious. I got to be kind of deliberate in what I'm doing. This is the jump ring, or actually, it's a split ring, and I'll just. Split it apart there. Again, too close. All right, and once they're on there, I'll pull them back together, and usually I'll crimp them a little bit together, and then you'll see it's kind of oval shape. I know there's a better way to do this. I just don't have the right tools to do it, and I'll just kind of crimp them back into a circular. Makes it almost into a a split ring instead of a, or a jump ring and. Almost done here. Completed. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So all I did here at the end was on the other side, I crimped on the little eyelet there, and had a larger uh, ring that I uh, split apart, put it in there. Just and I, I did crimp it together a little bit here to make it look more of the spring-like. So there's some overlap. So that this thing, if you don't do that, these little thin piece will just slip between. You know, they'll find their way out of there. I mean, these are meant to be soldered, but we're we're not soldering today. So, uh, so there it is. The completed project. Voila. All right. Hope that was informative. Hope it was uh, fun to watch. Fun and a little bit treacherous to make, but uh, there it is. Yeah. And we make them by the piles. All right. Uh, it's early. Maybe we'll make another one. See ya. Thanks for watching.